Welcome to the Blind Dyslexic at the Movies. I'm your host, Scott McCowan. Normally I'd be walking about doing these, but I was trying to do a couple today and I just froze. My brain just went nowhere. So I figured I'll do it right here. And, sorry about that. Uh, but nonetheless, Las Vegas starring De Niro, Douglas, Freeman, and Klein are four childhood buddies, and Douglas is going to get married to a younger gal. Um, they have to manipulate De Niro's character due to a falling out between him and Douglas to come to Vegas for the bachelor party, which is preceding a wedding that was going to be held on Sunday. Pretty good movie. Uh, good laughs. There was a movie trailer before the movie. I still, to this point, do not know what the movie was. I'm talking about the trailer before the movie. Uh, I have to get this off my chest so I don't forget. All I know about it is the dude has got to be a folk singer. was a folk singer. Travels around with a cat. And it's got John Goodman in it. That's all I gained from the trailer. <laughs> And it was rated R, which from the... I still have no idea why a movie like that would be rated R. But, whatever the movie is, who knows. If that's all I got, came away from the, seeing the trailer, that must not be a good movie. But, back to Last Vegas. There were great scenes in it. And so, and the big re there was a big revelation at the end, which just makes your heart just sink. I mean, all this time it's like, boom, 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 boom. And then when it comes, it's like, oh, jeez. You don't know if you're going to be able to recover. But, nonetheless, uh, the great, the movie, you sort of guess who Steam Version is going to end up with at the beginning of the movie. That is... Sadly, one of the bad things about the movie. One of the bad things. That you honestly, you, you watch it and you go, okay. But, that doesn't detract from the movie. It's still a great movie. Because the walk through, when she and Douglas are walking through the, uh, like the, um, the old signs of Vegas. It's like, oh man. That is smooth, because it's like a whole museum of old Las Vegas memorabilia. And the way Steam Virgin... The way Steam Virgin's character Diana manipulates Douglas into revealing how he really feels about his fiance is scary, because you do. I mean, when you're watching this stuff, uh, when they're on where they're at, you actually feel like you're there. And it's just, that's mean. That was just simply mean what she did. And evil. Uh, cufflinks. There was cufflinks that uh, Douglas's um uh, that one of the characters came up with. Because it was their like little nickname. They would call each other pricks and assholes. And they actually got cufflinks with that on it. And it's just, that was a funny bit. That's the one, because you see it, because they're being gifted this, and they're thinking, oh, after all of this, you give us, give us this box. Oh, nice. For all we've been through, and you open it up, and you see those cufflinks that say, asshole and prick. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, it had some great cameos in it. I won't reveal, you probably have already, if you've already seen it, great. If not, I won't spoil it for you. But there's, let's just say, a Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson-esque cameo of one rap singer, which fits the movie, which perfectly goes with the movie, because Leon, wait, uh, Leon, what was the dude's name again, uh, Lonnie, I think his name was, yeah, Lonnie, I'm sorry, Lonnie, played by, uh, Malco, he was supposed to be that person's assistant, but because Freeman had won all this money, they made him their assistant, and 
this cameo works perfectly. I mean, it's just, he's like the Mike Tyson of this movie. He fits in so well. I won't say who. I won't say who, but if you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. Uh, there's, a, there's a few heartwarming scenes in it as well. A lot of heartwarming scenes. Uh, you've got Klein's discussion with this little gal who, who wants to have fun with him, but he eventually has a conversation with him with this gal at the end saying, save yourself. Don't jump just because some guy tells you to. That's pretty much the conversation. And tells her that also somehow that tells her how he's so used to telling his wife all the great things, and if it's something he can't tell her, then it's not as great as he thought. But I have to say the pool scene with uh, Red Foo that's another thing that made the movie. I mean, it's just, it's a bikini scene, and everything that, you could pretty much predict how things are going to go with this scene. I'm sorry. You're watching it. You're laughing your ass off. At one point, when one gal came walking out, you're thinking, they're going to rate her a certain way. You watch. They're going to rate her a certain way. And they did. And they did. And what happens to De Niro? It's, oh, God, this this is what I want to see. That pool scene is what? The pool scene and the bachelor party at the end, I want to see it. I would love getting this DVD just to see the take. Just to see the uh, take, not take out, the... Uh, see everything, the behind the scenes on that. Oh, my God. God, and what happens to De Niro, and how it, how he, and how he comes through it, just makes the movie, and it's another one that you're thinking, by far he does that one too, perfect, perfect, uh, I got my notes here, Dean, they got this, uh, guy named Dean, Played by, played by, played by, played by, sorry about that. Uh, Jerry Ferreira, Ferreira, I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, who plays the typical douche. Let's just put it that way. Typical douche. And when he's made their bitch, that is funny. Uh, all the, I mean, has to carry their bags, has to be the gopher, and poor Klein, he tries to be tough, and when he, f but, I know, I know I'm not covering all the stuff that I should be in this, but I'm trying real hard not to tell the entire movie, which I got in trouble for doing one time. Uh, but yeah, there's a big revelation about uh, De Niro's wife at the end. And it's, you just think that everything is going to just blow up there. And the conversation that the three guys have, or two guys or three guys, two or three guys, two of the guys, two of the guys are having with three gals when he's, uh, when Douglas is talking to his fiance. It's just, it's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the heart-to-heart -heart that uh, Freeman has with his son, like, okay, yes, I'm old. Yes, I've had a mild heart attack. Get off my ass. Do Stop parenting me. I'm your parent. That was a good, that was one of the things I'm glad they kept in the movie. Because if they didn't, I don't think it would really had a full understanding. But like I said, you pretty much guess who's going to get uh, Diana at the end. But it doesn't detract from the movie. But Because De Niro eventually uh, breaks from his uh, somberness and, and just who he ends up with, 
even better. Even better. Uh, rating time here for Blind Dyslexic at the Movies. I've got... I rate them a certain way. I've got pretty much full price matinee, self-explanatory. Then you've got a dollar movie, which is sort of like a second run movie before it goes to DVD, which has got two connotations. Is it worthy of your collection, or should you wait? And then it drops from there. Yeah, I got TV, Saturday, Sunday matinee, late show, late, however late show, and finally, for those of us who remember the days, for those of us who remember the old days of the, of the cassettes, uh, oh, what was I talking about? Uh, I'm so old I don't remember now. Uh, cassette days. Uh, oh, that's right. For those of us who remember the old days of the cassettes, we got, pardon me, a group of it. I forgot. Uh, oh, oh, I think I, I think I went myself. I, I, I forgot my diaper today. Uh, but anyway, for those of us who remember the old cassette days, we got we got we got VHS and Beta. VHS and Beta. That's that's what I was trying to remember. Uh, okay, that was poor. I know I'm going to hell for that one, but I don't care. Uh, for overall, for overall laughs. I'm going to say matinee. It has some funny parts in it. And it's a good, keep you interested movie, matinee. Uh, staying on track and not losing, uh, not losing your interest. You know how a lot of times you're watching a movie and it's somehow they break away from here and by the time you get back, it's, it's like, it lost its rhythm. Full price. You got a full price and you got a matinee movie. Both in one. And overall, just overall DVD worthy. Very good movie. Very good cast. Uh, I can't think of one person who they would be able to Remove. It's almost like a brat pack. It's like if the brat pack got together. And as far as there's like a wine bottle, there's like a I'm sorry, a scotch bottle, in the which uh, they stole from this one rather from this one um, store several years ago when they were kids, and it finally gets opened. And good celebratory uh, end to a movie. Like I said, there's no there's no Easter egg at the end of the movie, so if you want to stay through the credits, go right ahead. I, I got, I think, past the actors. I think I got past the actors, and then I bounced. And I tried to do one yesterday, and it just totally, my mind just was nowhere. But nonetheless, I will be doing a walkabout here when I uh, go get something to eat, so don't think you didn't miss out on a walkabout. You did not. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm your blind dyslexic, Scott McCowan. You've been watching TBD at the movies. I'm going to try to do one of these as often as possible. Uh, please dive on to my, bl my blind dyslexic webpage. Leave a comment in the guest book. And ask whether or not you want to be made part of of uh, Sexy Kitty. Please. If you want to. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and leave your two cents down in the doobly-doo down below. And please, make a donation to the Heroes at Home and Cancer Sucks. Two great charities that do a world of good for our men and women in the military and those suffering from cancer. And to those of those then to those of you suffering from cancer, please get well soon. And to all of you folks in the military, thank you. Keep up the great job and stay safe. You're always in our hearts. As are the ones of you suffering from cancer. I'm your blind as lesson. Smoke them if you got them. Downy if it's on tap. 
there be my feet, and there be my face, and let's and there be my Doctor Who characters. Yes, I am a fan of Doctor Who, like you did. Yes. Ooh, and there's old Garfield in a Hooters cap. Let's see what old Garfield has to say before I sign off. Your words of wisdom at the end of this blind dyslexic at the movies is. You heard it from old Garfield. Sleep conserves energy. I'm your blind dyslexic. This has been TBD at the movies. Ciao for now.